My name is Fred with Bristol Artisan Company in Bristol, Tennessee, and I'm a Cam Master customer. Today I'm going to be talking about making the transition from a hobby slash prosumer class CNC machine to a true industrial CNC like this Cam Master behind me. So let's get started. A machine like this is a big investment, so I want to talk about some of the things that I considered in no particular order as I worked my way through this purchase decision. Number one, ease of operation. The CNC that I used for 10 years was controlled by Mach, Mach 3 and Mach 4, and I became very familiar with that software. CamMaster has an incredibly intuitive control system and interface that they designed with Yaskawa, so the transition from Mach to the new control system was very easy. In fact, I find CamMaster's control system easier to navigate than Mach. The control panel has everything laid out intelligently, so you have easy access to all the functions that you need to operate this machine. So for me, my learning curve was a couple of hours. Number two, accuracy. The machine I had before was pretty accurate, but the Cam Master has a Yaskawa servo system with a digital PLC controller, so that really takes concerns of accuracy out of the equation for me. It's a closed loop system, meaning that the servos are constantly communicating back and forth with the control board, so the machine always knows where it is and it knows immediately if there's a problem. Another big contributing factor to the accuracy of this machine is its rigidity. The Cam Master is heavy, it's rigid, and it's square. Hobby and prosumer CNCs just can't achieve this crucial aspect. Mass is one of the best and sometimes one of the cheapest ways to eliminate the vibrations that contribute to accuracy issues. Number three, efficiency. Most likely if you're considering an investment like this, it's because you've come to a place in your shop where you've reached the maximum potential of your CNC and you still need more, and that was my case. I do a lot of outdoor business signage. Typically these are carved HDU signs. They're double-sided, but I carve two pieces that get laminated together. So I'll be carving the outside face, but also carve the inside face so I can capture mounting and bracket hardware. So on the inside face, I might have a couple of tool changes. On the outside face, I might have four, five, six, seven, or eight tool changes, depending on the order of operation. So on this side, I might have eight to 10 tool changes. Same here, do the math. In the past, I would have to get the wrenches out, do a manual tool change, touch off, and then run. That might take five or six or seven minutes. Now, when it's time for a tool change, the machine goes to the back, it picks up the tool that it needs, and it's running again in a matter of seconds. So you see where I'm going with this. Suddenly, on any given project, I have reclaimed at least one hour of unproductive time. I can't begin to tell you the positive impact that that's had on my shop, if for no other reason to eliminate the hassle and the babysitting of it. The other thing that I can't quantify is the peace of mind that comes with having a machine like this. It changes your whole mindset on how you plan, approach, and execute your projects. Now let's consider setup. In the past, I'd be very careful setting up my material. I'd have to make sure that it was aligned to some arbitrary X, Y axis. I would have to put several screws in the material, making sure I didn't put a screw in a tool path, and then hope that the material was held flat. Now it's a matter of engaging the pop-up pins, aligning the material to the pop-up pins, turning on the vacuum, and I know the material is square to the CNC and it's held flat. Again, all in a matter of seconds, not minutes. Number four, the ability to generate cash flow. Almost any CNC will make money if it's used properly and used enough, but with a Cam Master, I can turn work around so much faster and in such greater volume than I ever could before, and that equates to cash flow. I've only had this machine for a few weeks, but I've already invoiced one third of the purchase price of this machine on sign jobs. I believe this machine will pay for itself in a year or less. I don't say any of that to brag because I'm tremendously grateful for that work and I know that things can change in a heartbeat, but I say it to make the point that a machine like this can have a relatively quick ROI even for a one-man shop or a small shop like mine. Another aspect of cash generation that for some reason I never hear people talking about is the ability to take the IRS Section 179 accelerated depreciation on capital purchases like this. So imagine at the end of the year, if your tax liability is this, if you could completely offset that through the purchase of this machine. That sounds like cash in your pocket to me, 
And I think that that should be heavily weighted in any calculation of how quickly the machine can pay for itself. Number five, cost of operation. A machine like this does have some upfront costs. In my case, I brought additional power into the shop. I had some electrical work so I could make all the connections. I pulled air lines to the CNC. I installed an air dryer. And I did some duct work for the dedicated Harvey Dust Control System. As far as the daily cost of operation, sure, it does use a little more electricity, but so far I haven't seen my power bill go crazy. The CNC itself is using about the same amount of electricity as my old CNC, but the vacuum system is pulling an additional load. I would say all in, it's pulling about what a heat pump would use. Let's talk about some practical considerations to take into account before making the decision to purchase a machine like this. First things first, space. Do you have enough room? This machine is bigger than my old CNC. It's about 12 inches wider and a fair amount longer. Luckily, I have a lot of space, so I can comfortably place this CNC in my shop. I recommend having about 36 inches of clearance all the way around the machine. CamMaster has information on their website where you can download the footprint of all their machines so you can determine how it will place in your shop. What about power requirements? That's one thing that could be easily overlooked, making sure that you have enough and the right kind of power. I have a 400 amp single phase service coming into the shop. CamMaster recommends a 40 amp circuit for the spindle and the control box on the CNC and a 60 amp circuit for the vacuum blower. On top of that, if you have a tool changer, you need compressed air. So figure in 30 amps for your compressor then your dust collection system may be 20 to 30 amps. So if you add all that up, you can see that I've committed about 150 amps coming out of the panel to operate this machine. Now that doesn't mean that it's all being used continuously because you're not starting up everything at the same time. But you can see that the end rush requirements on all these different things can be pretty high. Now on a side note, one of the nice features with the CamMaster vacuum blower is it starts up over the course of 15 or 20 seconds. So the end rush requirements are not as high on startup. What about compressed air? This machine requires a constant air supply to operate the tool changer and the pneumatic assist on the Z-axis. I have a 60 gallon Quincy compressor and it's working fine. In addition, CamMaster recommends clean, dry air, so I installed a dryer just before air reaches the CNC. Dust control. This machine is going to be moving fast and making a lot of chips, so it needs a capable dust collection system that can keep up with it. The dust boot on the cam master is incredible. The way the plenum is designed, it evacuates a lot of dust. It also engages, meaning it lowers automatically when a job starts and raises when a job finishes. The point is, you've come this far to have a Cadillac CNC set up, don't skip on the dust control. I've dedicated this Harvey G700 exclusively to the cam master and the combination of the two are working great. What about the initial setup? You know, you can't just roll a machine like this in your shop and expect that you can plug it up and go. There's a fair amount of setup that's going to take a few days on your end. The first thing that I had to do was level the machine, make the electrical connections, make the connections for the airlines, run ducting for the dust control system, plumb the vacuum system, and then place the vacuum blower in its permanent location. After that, I familiarized myself with the control interface, and then I ran several test parts before I ever ran anything that was meaningful. And finally, tech support. Luckily, I'm not new to CNC, so I haven't had to rely on CAM Master support for very much. But early on, there were a couple of things that I was unsure of, so I called in a couple of times. Each time, my call was returned or an email was returned within a short period of time. I can tell these folks know their machines inside and out and that they're passionate about their customers and their CNC machines. I want to talk quickly about a few things that require you to reprogram your brain when you make the leap from a hobby or prosumer class CNC to a true industrial machine like this. It's not a big deal, but I would say there are a few things that require a little more planning and forethought that you need to pay attention to before you hit the go button. This machine moves fast, especially the rapids, a lot faster than I was accustomed to. So if you're in the way when the machine rapids from one position to another, you're probably not gonna be able to get out of the way. So be aware of that and be very careful. 
The ability to move this machine faster during cuts makes spindle speed and chip load all that much more important when you're toolpathing your projects. But it also makes following chip load charts easier because now you have a beefier machine that can move faster and you have a wider range of spindle speeds available to you to achieve a certain chip load. With hobby and prosumer CNCs, oftentimes you're setting chip loads that are kind of arbitrary because you don't have a machine that's capable of the feeds and speeds to achieve a certain chip load recommended by the manufacturer of the tooling. At the end of the day, it all comes down to cut quality and tool life. I mentioned before that setup and work holding strategies are a little bit different on a machine like this. This machine is well suited for large sheets of material like plywood or HDU. Simply pull a vacuum, run your job, it works great. That's always a challenge on CNC's that lack the capability of pulling vacuum. The irony is, is that this machine is not as well suited for cutting small parts and little doodads. It doesn't mean you can't do it, it just means you have to adapt different work holding strategies to accomplish it. And finally, with this CNC, once you pull vacuum and start your job, you're kind of committed to finishing it. It's not as easy as shutting everything down and walking away and going to lunch and coming back and restarting because then you introduce the opportunity for your material to move or get moved. I guess you could always screw your material down to the spoil board, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Thinking about your design and toolpathing software when you migrate to a machine like this, there's a couple considerations to keep in mind. I've used Vectric VCAR Pro for years and it works great for me. The first consideration is obvious. Make sure you're using the correct post processor because your software might default to the post processor setup for your previous machine. The second consideration is now I have a tool changer, so in my tool library I have to very carefully assign the tool numbers because when the G-code calls for it to go pick up tool number six, that's what it's going to pick up. I just want to make sure that I have it assigned properly. So here's some closing thoughts. At this point, I'm a few months into owning my Cam Master and I have no regrets about the decision. It's well on its way to paying for itself. When I bought this machine, I knew there would be some differences over the machine I owned before. I just didn't know how much. I used to think that my old machine was awesome, and you know what, for what it was, it was pretty awesome, but it's not even in the same ballpark as the Cam Master. The Cam Master is heavier built with better components. It's square and true from the factory, no tweaking necessary. And because it's heavier built, stiffer, and has better components, I can run it faster, and just as importantly, with more confidence than I ever could before to achieve a great cut quality. Add the tool changer into the equation, and I've got a game changer for my shop. If you're thinking about upgrading from a smaller machine to a true industrial CNC, I encourage you to shop around just like I did. Just make sure you call Cam Master. I didn't make the decision quickly, and I considered a lot of options, but at the end of the day, I think I made the right decision in terms of price, quality, and support. Thanks for watching.